this is what the fun is of starting the home theater all over again. I'm using budget equipment and I'm getting a phenomenal sound. Of course, it's all about the tuning. What is up everybody? Hope you're having a great day. I am super excited to give you a quick tour of my rebuild, restart home theater, which is sounding great right now because of the whole magic beans thing. If you haven't seen that video, you should definitely check it out. <laughs> now, of course, I do want to let everybody know that we are having a holiday sale on the Spatial Audio Calibration Toolkit. So make sure you pick this up. Use the code TOUR15 so you can get 15% off your order while supplies last. Uh, I think these are going to sell out pretty quickly. So the first thing let's talk about is the display. Okay, this is a 65 inch Sony A80K from last year. So lucked out, there was an OLED already here. Now, a few things I'm not too thrilled about is that this articulating arm is just not the greatest. It's not, it's not the best. So I'm, I'm hoping I can, uh oh, I can replace this because the TV is actually crooked a little bit once once I get it to where it's almost centered above the center channel it's like sagging on this side so it's kind of yeah that sucks but 65 inch OLED that's good all right now let's get down here so here we have the Denon X6700H. I was very lucky, in fact, that I was able to grab this from my home. My mother had a different Denon, an S-series Denon here. I immediately swapped that out for this guy because we wanted Atmos and her previous one didn't have Atmos. So now the Denon 6700 is a fantastic AV receiver. There's a lot of sales going on right now. I'll put a link down in the description. This will run 13 channels of processing and power 11 channels. So right now I've got nine channels powered and we'll get to that in a second. Now down here is an old school monster power station that's pretty funny that it's been here for so long. I think this thing's over 20 years old. There's some like security camera stuff here. And when we go up to this level here, we've got a controller for Xbox. I did pick up an LG UBK90 for about 85-ish dollars on eBay used. I did pick up this uh, Apple TV 4K during the Black Friday sale. And these two things I don't use. They're here, they're my mom's, so I'm just leaving them there. Which has taken up a few HDMI inputs on the Denon, so I want to unplug them at least so I can have access to more HDMI inputs. Now, as you can see down here, we've got the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5. I was using the Xbox for all of my streaming, but now all my streaming is done on the Apple TV 4K. And out of the two consoles, I still use the Xbox more for Call of Duty and stuff like that. But if I want to play like the Final Fantasy remake or whatever, I'll jump over to the PlayStation. So the PlayStation isn't currently connected. Now let's move on to the speakers. And this guy right here is an amazing speaker I got at a steal of a deal. This is the T6 Tower by Monolith. This is the Encore T6 Tower speaker. And wow, this thing is awesome. So I've got this one and it cost $120. This one and it's matching one over there cost $240 for the pair. The center channel is the Encore C6 center. It's the matching center. And this guy cost $105. Now these speakers cost more retail, but I was able to get them on a smoking deal and they do not disappoint. If you guys know per listen, these speakers were designed by the same person. So yeah just a lot cheaper, a lot cheaper. Now I know you guys have been looking at the subs sent over for review by ELAC. This is the RS500 10 inch subwoofer. And over here we have the RS700, which is a 12 inch subwoofer. Now both of these are great. They are a little on the pricey side though. I think the equivalent to the RS700 would be the SB3000 by SVS. Joe measured both of them, the SB3000 and the ELAC RS700, and they're pretty much identical as far as performance is concerned. Right now with the sale price, the ELAC is pretty much the same price as the SVS. Now, if you've seen my video about speaker on a stick, I'll link it up above so you guys know exactly what I'm using. But this contraption is what I'm using to put the high channel in the correct place without having to put a whole bunch of mess around 
the room here. And if I really need to, I can fold them down. And that's kind of what happens over here in the down position, down meaning they're at the lowest point. I sleep here where the main listening position is. I, you know, I don't want this thing falling on my head. So I just leave it in this position until I'm ready to watch something. And then uh, we're gonna undo this top, get it into this position here. And now we're gonna use this quick adjustment handle. Boom, gonna do the same thing here. Tighten the first one and boom. And there you go. We've got the height channels in place, the rear heights in place. As far as surround speakers are concerned, I'm using the Monolith T5 towers. These are not as good as the T6, but it gives me that cohesiveness. They're running pretty much the same materials, but they're just not as good as the T6. With a little EQ though, they are fantastic. The T5 Towers, I actually received for free from Mr. Joe, Joe and Tell, and you can find some really good deals on these speakers, so they're not that expensive. As far as the Atmos channels, these are also monolith speakers. These are the THX satellite speakers, which I've made videos about before. I've got four of them for my high channels. They make great Atmos channels because they have a keyhole mount on the back and they have a quarter 20 thread at the bottom here. So very easy to mount these guys. Now, of course, there's a ton of remotes in a home theater and you can't forget the universal. I was able to get this Harmony 650 on eBay for about $86, $87. It is used, uh, but that's okay. It still works. Sometimes I just take a chance and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, yeah, then it doesn't work, you know? But at the end of the day, this is what the fun is of starting the home theater all over again. I'm using budget equipment and I'm getting a phenomenal sound. Of course, it's all about the tuning. Yes, it's good to start off with a speaker that, that measures well. First and foremost, that's what you're gonna wanna do, right? The T6 Encores are phenomenal. And I am getting such a good sound out of them and <laughs> that I'm kind of like blown away. So this is the base, okay? This is, this is the base layer of the whole thing. And I'm excited to get started reviewing products. I have a rack that has just come in so I can use the rack to bring in the products that I'm supposed to review. A Revolution player has come in. A couple of items from Hi-Fi Rose have come in, but I didn't want to do anything until I got to show you guys what it is I'm working with. And of course the tuning is super important. It is amazing what a little bit of tuning can do when you know what you're doing and to get the best out of our home theater. You can't just expect to just spend money on the most expensive thing and think you're getting the best experience because at the end of the day, you're probably not. If you don't dial it in specifically to your room with the capabilities of your speakers, taking that into account, if you're not doing any of that, then you're missing out. So yeah, here it is. Humble beginnings again. Let's go. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.